All right, now to segue into your own training, as I was telling you earlier, Jeremy Frey told me years ago that there came a time in his lifting career where, you know, it's like a light bulb just went off and he was using other people to help with programs and he was following other programs. He did block training for a while. He did, you know, West Side style training for a while. And then he just kind of put the faith in himself and auto-regulated more or less the training and his total went up 150, 200 pounds. And I remember that conversation with him because it was something that I was trying to tell him beforehand, this, this is where you want to try to strive to be, but it's hard to really tell somebody how to strive to be someplace that's really cerebral and, and not so physical. And then when he finally hit it, he was amazed with the progress. Yeah. But just based upon the numbers that you're lifting, you've been through that. So thinking back through, you know, all the years of your training, I'm sure like everybody else, you started with some kind of linear based periodization, maybe block periodization, West Side periodization. What are some of the takeaways, positive takeaways from each one of those things that helped to kind of develop the Dan Green philosophy, meaning the philosophy that works for you, not, not a philosophy that you're gonna take and try to sure. tell everybody. But what are some of those takeaways that kind of carried over that you use now, but not in the full realm of that philosophy? Yeah, I think, you know, when I was first lifting, I was always just kind of following bodybuilding routines, you know, I'd bench mm -hmm. like three sets of eight and dumbbells and flies and all that stuff. And I think the good thing about that is you put on muscle. There's a lot of guys who come in and just want to lift heavy, but they don't, they don't fill out. And that's a problem. So learning how to, not just how to lift for volume, but how to, I think when I, when I think about lifting like a bodybuilder, I think about making sure that you feel that the muscle's doing the work. Yes. You know, so you're feeling the motion, not just moving with power. Um, you know, I spent a, like when I first started training as a power lifter, most of what I was doing was kind of based on reading stuff off of Elite and reading stuff off of the West Side page. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a ton of articles in both places that are all really great. Um, you know, I went through probably like two years of following kind of a West Side training model. And that kind of, <clears throat> that was working fine for me, but I still would see some, some places where I'm like, well, I'm doing everything I think I'm supposed to do. The results aren't quite there on everything I wanted. So the best thing for me is that I've gone to a lot of meets and I've met a lot of people. I've seen some other, you know, styles of coaching and I've given them all a try. I think there was a, there was an article on Elite about the Finnish deadlifting program, which is all mm -hmm. like, based on doing deficit pulls and stiff leg deadlifts and just a lot of volume like that. And so I tried that and it worked great. I met, you know, I met another guy, the first time I came to the Arnold, he was a lifter, he competed in the deadlift meet and I saw him train one day and he, he did kind of the same thing. He had a lot of block pulls, he had a lot of deficits and just, it was just like he, on deadlift day, he just deadlifted. Mm -hmm. It wasn't anything fancy, <laughs> but the volume was there, the different heights and stuff. And, you know, I had a, my main training partner followed training from uh, Josh Bryant and mm -hmm. so I, I kind of followed along with some of the benching that he was doing and some of the stuff made a lot of sense so I kind of modified it to what felt good for me I wanted to do more of certain things and you know less of other things so I kind of just adapted it I think in the end what I've kind of taken away from it is to be a good lifter it's like a sport like any other sport there's a skill to it it's not just like the strongest guy it doesn't just show up and win mm -hmm. you have to be the best so being strong is half of it but having the skill to actually execute the lifts, you know, that's, that's really critical. Cause if, if the only thing that matters is who had the most muscle, you just show up and weigh in, yeah, you yeah. know, and that's who would win. That's not how it works though. So for me, like becoming skillful means you have to practice. Mm -hmm. So one of the things I also looked at was as a weightlifter, I looked at the Bulgarian weightlifting team and their program is sort of notorious for just training the main lifts. So yes. The reason being is that they're just getting really skillful on that main lift. So I started kind of doing that where I have a lot of, the main lift competition lift in my training. But one of the things I learned from, you know, kind of the bodybuilding and the West side is the variation is really king for building just general strength. Mm -hmm. So to me, I wanted to get both. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of how I figure out the program for myself. Now I have part of it that's based on, you know, the competition lifts, part of it that's based on kind of variances that are, uh, that really target the right spots mm -hmm. and bodybuilding. So kind of a blend of those three things. So the key takeaway, and the reason why I wanted to ask him this question is 
as he was talking, he went through seven different training philosophies that he's gone through that's kind of mashed up to become what he's doing right now. So if you're an intermediate or you're a beginner lifter, you don't want to do what he's doing now. You want to do what he did to get where he is. Because the key to all of this is being able to figure out what works for yourself. And certain things that he pointed out that he learned in the very beginning, the, the, thing, the, the bodybuilding thing is a, is a, it's a huge thing that, that I struggle with with a lot of powerlifters right now because to effectively work a muscle, if all you wanted to do was to build your triceps or say it's an exercise you're doing at the end of your program, is it really necessary to use 100 pounds for, for dumbbell tricep extensions if you're just doing it for, for hypertrophy? You know, you can use 40 pounds, use a slower tempo, and just focus on using the triceps. Or you can heave that shit up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I do a lot of shoulders and rows, and it's like, I see a lot of guys doing heavier shoulders, and um, I don't see a lot of guys doing heavier rows. I've been training that for a long time, but one thing when I do train with other guys, and I try to show them, like, you know, what to feel, what to yeah. do, they're just kind of like, what? <laughs> they have a hard time understanding it. But and then when they do it, they're like, holy shit, that feels really good, but I need to go lighter. Yeah. See, that's a, that's a huge thing, though, because when you're talking about longevity in the sport, wear and tear of the joints and the health aspect that you're talking about with your clients, if it's, if it's an exercise that isn't going to have the dynamic correspondence or like you were talking about, carry over to the skill of the lift, and it's just there to build muscle, why beat the shit out of yourself if you can slower the tempo and do it like a bodybuilder yeah. to just build the muscle? You know, it's now we're not talking about your main exercises here, you know, with and when he's talking about the skill of the sport, he's talking about the squat, bench, and deadlift exactly. as they're done in competition. Yeah, and when I train those, I do focus on like acceleration all the way through. You know, one of the things, you know, from West Side training, there's the concept of dynamic training. But one of the things that I see that people kind of mess up with it is it's not just good, like if you're deadlifting, go to a meet and you see some guys just like, ripping the weight off the floor in the warm-up room and then they go out for their attempt on the floor and they grind to a halt right at the knees. So you could look at them and say, wow, they're super explosive and fast and they're in the warm-up room, they're gonna be awesome, but then they can't grind at a slow speed. But the problem is, is you have to be able to accelerate the weight all the way through the lift, not accelerate off the floor, decelerate past the knees. That's not, that's not the same thing. So I think a lot of guys mess that concept up. It's sort of like the accelerate more, but sort of like, you know, you see the, the short lockouts, yeah, yeah, yeah. the high hips, you're sort of like shortening the range of motion. And in terms of just physics, if you go shorter distance, but more force, the power is sort of just equaled out because mm -hmm. force and distance, one went up, one went down. So the, the trick is like, I think about, like if you look at Andy Bolton when he deadlifts, when he's warming up, he hits his lockout and the bar just kind of keeps going because mm -hmm. he's accelerating it all the way through the lift. He's not sort of cutting the speed yeah. off at the top. And so for me, that's kind of what I think about accelerating off the floor, but then accelerating even more past the knees. And I think all the lifts are like that too. What that tells you is that you're always in the right position to be powerful or forceful at any moment in the lift. Not like, it's like the concept of just get speed to blast through your sticking point. Yeah. That's fine. Of course you want to be fast, but at the same time, you want to be in the right position of the sticking point too. Yes. So yeah. it's kind of, it's not good enough to just do one if you want to be better. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Well, I want to thank you for the interview. This was uh, great information. And if you want to get a hold of Dan or you want to check out his training facility, what's the website? Uh, it is bossbarbo.com. There you go.